Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. As mentioned, my name is Bonang Mateba from sunny South Africa, and uh, it gives me such great pleasure to sit here in front of all of you to chat about uh, a continent that I call home, Africa, a continent that is rich in uh, natural resources, and of course, a continent that is rich in young, young population, eager for transformation, and of course, eager for change. This morning, I'm sitting with two African giants, really, um, and we're about to discuss some of the opportunities and challenges that uh, Africa faces in terms of scaling up transformation and how the continents, you know, vibrant people and our uh, culture of creativity have really positioned us for uh, true success. So thank you very much to all of you for being here. Masai, I'm going to start with you. Um, let's chat about Africa. I mean, Africa is an incredibly dynamic continent, really, and um, an investable place, I, I can say. But let's talk about your, your journey a little bit from uh, scouting talent in Africa to leading social and economic development on the continent, you know, through uh, basketball. How, where specifically, let me rather say, should, be people, uh, should people be investing in on the continent? Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for, um, for, for being here and inviting me to, uh, to speak here. Um, I, my, my view is youth, and I, I think strongly about um, even before I go to um, places or regions on the continent, I would say we have to invest in the youth. Um, they say one out of every four p persons um, in the world will be African by 2050. The median age uh, in Africa is, is 20 years old. Yes, and, and where that population is going, uh, the demographic is, is incredible. Uh, when I see urbanization and cities really booming and growing uh, on the continent, honestly, you pick wherever you want. There's yeah. different cultures, different people, and I think, I think infrastructure is something that we need to really look at uh, and invest in. The last thing I would say is women. Yes, we need to invest more uh, in women all over the world, but even particularly for me yes, um, on the continent. So youth, women, uh, I think um, stand out to me. Infrastructure stands out. The different regions in Africa, there's so much richness in everything we, in different places you go to, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's the Southern Africa, whether it's Eastern Africa, there's, there's so much. You go to Francophone Africa, there's so much richness in anything. Uh, and then Africa's talent is its people. Yeah, the people is, are so talented in different fields. So, uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> we'll chat about the youth a little bit later, but uh, Joel, I want to know, you moved from the, from, um, to the U.S. from Cameroon as a teenager. And, uh, you know, how has that, you know, being part of the Afri African diaspora, how has it had, how has it impacted you, rather, you know, personally and professionally? I mean, it's helped me a lot because, you know, being from, uh, sorry, uh, thank you for having me here. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, it's, you know, it's an honor being here, sitting with you guys, talking about, you know, these type of things. But, you know, looking at my story, you know, being from Cameroon, I'll, you know, we, you know, if we're talking about sports, you know, I didn't play, I played sports growing up, but I was playing volleyball, and, you know, Masai was talking about infrastructures, and we don't have a lot of opportunities, and it wasn't until I was 16 years old that I started playing basketball, and it just happened out of nowhere. And uh, I was lucky enough uh, because someone saw something in me uh, and, you know, and he was one of the guys uh, that gave me the opportunity and really, you know, one of the reasons why I'm sitting right here uh, with you guys. But it's helped me a lot because, you know, the way I think about, you know, wanna do, what I want to do about my life, uh, it, all, it all comes from, you know, being from Africa, you know, how I was raised, what I saw growing up, the struggle. Uh, what we had to deal with, uh, you know, to, you know, have these opportunities. And like you said, there's a lot of talent, uh, but there's not enough opportunities. Um, but, you know, I, I think just the background, um, you know, the way of life, uh, it just shapes you to, you know, just want to keep working harder and harder to uh, be successful. 
Let's talk about storytelling. I mean, you've both been part of documentaries that, and uh, projects that have, you know, kind of showcased the African culture to the global audience. You know, Masai, I want to know from you, what role does storytelling play, particularly in expanding the continent's influence abroad? You know, whether it's uh, through movies or television or even social media. Well, I think they are not told enough. I, I, I really, the stories of Africa were done with yeah, people come in and taking pictures with, with kids and flies, you know, like, and uh, yeah, everybody thinks Africa is about uh, just safaris. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, they're beautiful places uh, to go to. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think charity and philanthropy is, is incredible, um, but we want investments in Africa. Yeah, I think there's, there's plenty of room uh, for that. I think. Um, we're heading, I think, slowly in uh, some of the right direction with leadership in so certain areas, and we have to continue to grow in that. But I'll say, look at this guy, like, sitting here. Yeah. He's an MVP in the NBA. If I had my phone, I'd show you a picture of him in Basketball Without Borders many years ago. Um, skinny, low, scrungy kid. You know, <laughs> that, um, um, but look at what he has become, you know, like, does everybody know that journey? Does everybody know, you know, that, that story? He scored 70 points in a game, one of the most dominant players in the NBA, um, just won a gold medal. And, yes. And there are so many of them in the league, the Pascal Siakams, you know, like there, there are so many um, um, young African players, but young African players in, in every league, in every sport, you know, like right at the top. You see them in soccer, uh, but it's also entertainment. You see what all the artists are doing. You see Tyler, Davido, Burner Boy, all these people are blowing up in the world. Yeah, and we need platforms, we need infrastructure for all of this to grow. And storytelling is part of it. We have to make this, you know, like part of um, our ecosystem. Yeah, so that these more kids, more youth, Joel has a kid, he has a kid on the way. Sorry, I just told you <laughs> business. Uh, I have three kids, I have three kids. Yeah. It, it, for me, I think, um, we have to pave the way for that. And I know that's how he's thinking. I know that's how Pascal Siakam thinks. I know how, this, how these young African players, uh, if, and even ex-players, you know, like um, really think. We have to develop this platform. And Bloomberg has done an incredible job following, they, they really have, following some of us, following the stories coming and covering, and we appreciate that. But we have to absorb this and go even do more. So let me, um, you know, hand that question to you again. The, the importance of storytelling, you know, in expanding the continent's influence abroad. Um, I mean, uh, you know, like you say, it's all about the youth, and uh, and then for myself, um, you know, I feel like, you know, I, I just said it. There's a lot of there's a lot of talent, um, but most of the time, and a lot of times, we not we are not seen. Uh, if I wasn't lucky enough, I would not be sitting here. Uh, but, you know, you got to, you know, you, when you're looking at my story, um, you know, I just want people to understand that it's possible. Uh, that's why storytelling is, you know, is extremely important because I believe, you know, growing up uh, watching a bunch of athletes, uh, you know, in every sport, because I watch every sport, and I all, you know, just looking at the success and what they did, and I kind of, that's how I dreamt, because I wanted to be at this level. I wanted to be as successful as those guys and put the work in. And I want people to understand, you, you know, just look at my story. You know, you, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here, honestly. But, you know, you know I also put the work in um, because of what was given to me and, you know, took advantage of it. And there's a lot of people that are waiting for that opportunity. And like I said, looking at my story, I just want people to dream and believe that it is possible. Absolutely. Now, Masai, you mentioned early on, you mentioned the youth you know, in, in, in Africa, and 20 years into giants of Africa, your ethos is dream big. Mm -hmm. What inspires you most about the next generation of Africans? Well, they are smarter than us. Yeah, they are, I, for one, yes. And 
Um, sometimes we, we come off our uh, next generation, next generation. Well, we have to accommodate and we have to really absorb this next generation and give them this platform yeah, to really, uh, really perform. Storytelling is such a big, yeah, it's such a big uh, part of it. I look at what South Sudan did in the Olympics, you know, like and what Luol Deng, a story, yeah, like that. I look at the NBA and what they are doing in Africa. I look at all the young African players playing. I, there's so many things, you know, that we're, and the talent, and we don't have infrastructure. Yeah, how can we say, how can you imagine we can say that in Nairobi, in Accra, in Johannesburg, in Abidjan, there's no arena. There's no arena. But if I count all the artists that are going crazy in this world, they cannot actually do a tour in their own continent, but they can come and sell out Madison Square Garden and then hop yeah, to, to uh, Scotia Bank Arena and then go to United States. They can go to all these places and sell them out, but in our continent, we don't have you know, that opportunity. That's that next generation that we have to pre mm. prepare for. And, we need people to be visionaries, investors to think, you know, like what this ecosystem can actually look like yeah, when uh, this happens. We do have the facilities. Yeah, we do have 30, 40 years um, buildings um, that have been built how many years ago, in the colonial days, and nothing has been done in prime locations in all these cities. So back to your question, I think that this next generation, we have to prepare them. Yeah, we have to f find a path. Just like maybe there were these little paths that were found for us. They were not so open and there's plenty work that these guys have done, we've tried to do. We have to find, you know, like those, those little paths and make it a little bit easy mm -hmm. yeah, for the youth and especially women especially young girls of the continent. I love that. Um, now, Joel, I want to know, your foundation works towards improving the lives of young people in Cameroon. Um, you know, like uh, Masai said, what do you think is needed to help them flourish? I mean, I think, um, you know, we keep going back to infrastructures, uh, not just in sports, uh, mm -hmm. education, you know, uh, health, uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, mentors, uh, I think, you know, those are some of the keys. Role models, uh, you know, like, you know, Masai, you know, has been a role model, you know, especially for me. Be being in this situation, like, for a long time, I've always wanted to do, you know, all I cared about is, you know, help, like, helping people. And, you know, since I became a father, that became even more amplified because I look at my kids, you know, I look at the legacy I want to leave, you know, I want to, I want them to understand, you know, the world, you know, they have everything, but growing up, we didn't have everything, but I want them to understand that, like, you know, that's not, you know, in other countries, you know, where we grew up is not that way. So I think, you know, the focus on youth, um, you know, infrastructures, you know, mentorship, um, I think is a big deal because it's helped me a lot. So same question to you. You mentioned the youth, you mentioned women. What is needed, you know, to help our continent flourish and to help the youth flourish and to help young women flourish? I think we, look, we need to look at the, we, we, need to, we need to look at the continent better, you know, like even um, inside the continent, leadership needs to be better. I think um, outside the continent, the diaspora are doing an incredible job, you know, like affecting you don't have to do big, big things. Yeah, people sometimes think you have to go back and do grand things. You can start like little. And I want people to actually think of Africa as a place of investment. I know sometimes it's not that straightforward, but there are unbelievable people that you can work with. You know, there are many people, uh, in, I, I think, uh, in our circles, in our world, you know, like in, 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 in different, aspects of life that you can actually work with uh, in Africa, the incredible countries uh, that you can go to. Let's not, I'm going to re-emphasize it again. Where every other continent is getting older and Africa is getting younger. 
there is something there. Yes. yes, there is something that will change, and we have to pay attention yeah, to that. To say one out of every four people is going to be African by 2050, let's go back and really think about that. Yeah, and think about the talent that comes from there. Absolutely. When I say that there's 100 LeBrons and 100 Embiid's walking around Africa, and we haven't been discovered, listen to Embiid's story, and he says how he was close to not being here. Yes, very close to not being here. There are some of them that are 30 years old, 40 years old, and maybe they never saw a basketball but they are this tall and they are physically like this big. And <laughs> yes, but they never saw a basketball because there was yeah. no infrastructure, right? Yeah, there was nowhere to play. Why do you think Africans dominate the world in soccer? Because as soon as we come, if I bring a football right now, me and Embiid now will ex show an exhibition to all of you here <laughs> because we came out of our mother's wombs yes. and the first thing we did was kick a ball. Yes, in your backyard, you don't need much facilities. That's why the talent is super. Other sports, we have to encourage, whether it's basketball, swimming, anything, we really have to encourage. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Joel. Thank you very much. Africa's young. Africa is dynamic, um, passionate, investable, and ready. So that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very, very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.